There is no one area of success or mastery you get to and you go, I'm done. Kind of like when Ali came out of jail and they had stripped him of his prime, he had to learn the rope -a dope to beat George Foreman and, you know, and he had to fight a different way. So I had to start figuring out how to master my grind today because the Damon John at 48 years old is not the grind that the Damon John at 28 years old had. All right, welcome back everyone to the School of Greatest Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the legendary Damon John in the house. Good to see you, man. Thank you for Very having excited. me. And the reason we're laughing right now <laughs> is because Damon just told me two dad jokes that just it's really happened, bad dad that are jokes. hilarious. Really bad. Really bad. Uh, the last one had me rolling. Um, you'll have to check out. Uh, we'll do an Instagram story later where you yes. guys can see the dad jokes. But man, it's good to have you back on. Thank you for having me. You got a new book called Rise and Grinds. Rise and grind. Outperform, outwork, and out hustle your way to a more successful and rewarding life. If you guys haven't got it, go get it right now. Yeah, I'm excited uh, about powerful it. Powerful lessons in here, examples, case studies, all the good stuff. You are uh, you're a legend, man. Shark Tank continues to elevate. You know, you rose. I'm not a legend. I'm just I'm just one of those people on the show. I think that you know. Um, I think that the sharks are really not important to the show. Mm. At the end of the day. I think that uh, it's the fundamentals of business that all yeah. of us know. It's just that Mark Burnett and ABC do a really great job um, editing and putting yeah. the information out there that people need to learn from. But mm -hmm. any business person who knows the fundamentals could be on the show. But yeah. yes, thank you yeah. for <clears throat> saying that I'm somewhat on the show. It's but, great you know, though. But, it's, but it continues thanks. to elevate. You know. Yeah. It's still inter I still watch it because it's still good. You, you know, know what? I I I learned so much on yeah. uh, being on the show from not only the sharks. My fellow sharks, but I learned so much from the entrepreneurs coming up doing yeah. business a whole new way, but Smart. yet understanding the fundamentals of what it takes to, to make it. Yeah. yeah. What do you What do you think is um, who's been the most inspiring entrepreneur that's come on that either did a deal or didn't do a deal, but you were just like <clears throat> whether you got with them or not, but you're just like man, something about them that they had that every entrepreneur should have. So hard to say that because <laughs> you know there's the, we've seen now I think over the years we've seen two thousand people. Wow. And trust me. Does it ever get old? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Like three, four hundred of them. Mo, Mo's yeah. bows who will come on there and remind me of my mother and myself as a little kid trying to hustle or um, or the guy who, who I joke all the time but <clears throat> did the scrub daddy or yeah, yeah. or the... I mean, there's so many people. I mean, Cousin Maine Lobster, like all these yeah. people. I met people on there, they, they just said they mortgaged <clears throat> everything. There was one lady on there who did... Um, uh, she basically said she was selling the aluminum out of, of glass uh, 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 when they take down houses. And, they, you know, she sold the aluminum out. And she made her first $250 selling the metal, scrap metal back. And then she started her company. I mean, wow. just really, really amazing people, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't even pick one. Yeah. It's been inspiring, though. How long has this show been going on for now? We are about to start shooting our 10th uh, uh, season, season wow. and we wow. are uh, in our ninth right now. We are, Crazy. and I'm loving all these amazing um, guest sharks, mm -hmm. you know, because if you think about it like this, you know, uh, you know, I sit next to Cuban, and I sit next to Mark and uh, um, Kevin, and, you know, after a while, I know their philosophy of business, yes. right? Whether I agree or disagree, it doesn't matter. But when you get a new shark on, you get new uh -huh. theories, new philosophy, and you get to object. After I hear Kevin say a hundred times, you're dead to me, yeah. I'm not offended by it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I hear the new person like Richard Branson or Bethany or A-Rod or, or, yeah. or Sarah Blakely say yeah. something or uh, Rohan say something, I may not agree. Or they may say something that's so profound that it changes the way I look at things, you know, mm. and do business today because I'm constantly trying to learn. Right, and you're yeah. constantly evolving in business yeah. as social media and the internet and online yeah, marketing everything, changes. Everything, yeah. What's been the biggest lesson you've learned about yourself over the last 10 seasons? That um, I think the biggest lesson I've learned about myself over the last 10 seasons is that I don't know enough. Um, mm. uh, you know, and that no matter what business I invest in, it has to go back to the fundamentals of I love the person, I love the business, and I, find, I, and I want to learn more about it. And it's like Christmas every day mm. when I wake up to learn the business. If it's just a money play, <clears throat> it's of no value to me because I can go and 
put my money in the in the market or yeah. bonds or something like that. Let's Crypto put, or whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> try right? something I, I put my money in Tesla. You know, Elon is not calling me asking me how to build a car. Yeah. Right. So <clears throat> I have to love the person, the business, and I have to be. I have to wake up every day like Christmas to want to learn more about it. Mm. What do you think has been the greatest negotiation you've ever done, whether it be on Shark Tank or in life? <clears throat> um, the greatest negotiation I've ever done, really, if you look at it from a business perspective, is when I negotiated out of ignorance with Samsung uh, the textile division when I first got my FUBU deal. I had, um, I was a young kid. I was very scrappy. I was hungry. Um, I was a little ignorant in business. I was really ignorant <laughs> yeah, in business. Yeah. Um, I had I had mortgage in my house and I was um, running my own factory and I had met with Samsung textile division for manufacturing distribution probably about six months prior to mortgaging my house and I remember calling the president of Samsung all the time of textile division and saying hey what's up I want to do the deal I want to do the deal he never called me back you know it's kind of like how I don't call a lot of people back right. who just pitch me <clears throat> and I got really pissed off because I felt like he was uh, ignoring me and now he had already had the meeting with me he had, mm -hmm. had showed some interest so now I have a hundred thousand dollars from my mortgage of the house and I'm making my, I, I turn my house into a factory and I'm up and running. They start to hear about, Samsung starts to hear about how FUBU's doing well and everybody's wearing it. So he calls back. <clears throat> and I remember, you know, now that I have $100,000, I'm thinking that's all the money in the world and I will never yeah. need any help by anybody <laughs> right, ever. Right. And I was pissed off. I was like, this on the phone. Man, you're so full of, you know, S-H-I-T, you know, why didn't you call me back? I was taking real, you know, right. emotional, Personal, right? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, the deal I better have is this deal, this deal, this deal. And they said, no problem, just come on in because they had offered me a deal that was, you know, what it was standard. But because they were, they, they saw that I grew mm -hmm. and I had this ego, like, I don't want you anymore. I don't need you. I negotiated out of ignorance and it was my best deal ever. I would never do that today. You negotiated out of the deal, right? I negotiated out of ignorance saying I got the best deal ever. Oh, wow. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> but as I know myself now and I turn around, I was out of that $100,000 in almost a month later, <laughs> yeah. right? Because I was paying for raw goods 90 days ahead of time. I was paying for my salary and staff and I was giving my um, stores terms, mm -hmm. 60, 90 day terms. And I would have lost my house and the business and everything else. And thank God. Thank yeah. God I did that deal. But it was out of ignorance that right. I did the deal. Right. And, uh, I, you know, I guess everybody always says, you know, um, you know, do you believe in luck? And I say, no, I don't believe in luck. But maybe I should, now that you asked that question, <laughs> nobody bit. ever asked me. Yeah. Maybe that was a little bit of luck. It was a little bit, yeah. Ignorance, luck. Yeah. Yeah, timing, everything. Yeah. Now, you said you have a couple daughters, right? How many I do. I have three daughters. Three daughters. A 24-year-old, a 19-year-old. And this really, really nasty and aggressive two-year-old. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's she's vicious. Wow. She's a hard person. <laughs> now, when you had your first daughter, did you feel like your views of business shifted or the way that you worked shifted? Did you start working harder, more balanced, less, or did everything stay the same? I... You know, my first two daughters and my first marriage, I worked 30 hours a day because mm. I said to myself, how am I ever going to be able to take care of these three, um, these three humans? And, and now my life is no longer about me. It's about providing every single thing I can to them, getting them, uh, you know, to have a place they can live that is safe for them yeah. and education and medical and things of that nature. And, you know, and I would die for them. Yeah. So um, I, I, I didn't have a life at that point, you know. Um, and FUBU was just starting. And I never knew that FUBU or never thought that FUBU would be anything larger than a boutique for my four friends and I to work out of. And I was like, <clears throat> this is my this is my shot at the big time. I'm not going to let anybody stop me. And I really kind of mentally said to myself, I'll get to know my daughters when they're 10 or 15 years old because there is no time now. I have to be in Asia for six months at a time. Mm -hmm. I have to be doing this and that. And I, I questioned if, I, if it was the smartest move to do, but I said to myself, you know what? If I was a sanitation worker, I would still, or not, nothing wrong with that, but if I worked right. a, a city job, I would still work every, over hour, every, every, every overtime I could because I need to 
<clears throat> be able to provide for them. Yeah. And now, you know, I have my, my, my beautiful little two-year-old, and it's a different way of life now. Now, and going back to this, as we'll talk about the book, Rise and Grind, now my theory is how much love can I give to this to this little being? Really? Uh, yeah, because it has <clears throat> changed. You know, now my life, obviously, I, I am in a better place, uh, right. you know, and I have the <clears throat> opportunity to be able to give as much love as I can to to her. Not that I don't give as much love as I can to my, my other daughters. They, right. they're, they're my driving force as well. Right. So do you feel like you have a little bit more balance now? Even you're working just as hard, <clears throat> but you feel like you take that time to... I do, but that's exactly how the theory for the book came around. I was... Because I don't see you slowing down, really. Right, so, so what was happening was... <clears throat> I looked at it and I said, you know, I'm going on nine years of Shark Tank. I have hundreds of companies I work with and or deal with, and I'm investing mm -hmm. in a bunch of them, you know. Um, I have a new two-year-old. I, mm -hmm. I have work-life balance. I want to get home to my lady, you know. I want to do the things I love to do, fish or, you know, archery or whatever, snowboard. Or, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really good on the board, baby. But I, um, <laughs> I want to do all those things. Yeah. How do I do it? And I went and I would go in to speak to other people that I respect and I would say, what's the tricks or the techniques you do to have work-life balance? They all told me the same exact thing, but in different forms. Mm. And I started to notice that I was, I, I can improve in certain areas, you know. Again, like you and I were talking, uh, I don't know if it was on camera or off camera, yeah. but there is no one area of success or mastery you get to and you go, I'm done, right? You know, you can, you can be somebody who's a master at judicial uh, or uh, or karate or something like that. And you know, at 40 years old or 25 years old, you're a certain master. But at 80 years old, you don't have the same muscle retention or the same speed. So you have to learn to right. master it a different way. Kind of like when Ali came out of jail and they had stripped him of his prime, he had to learn the rope a dope to beat George Foreman, and you know, and he had to fight a different way. Um, you can't so, just sit in the pocket and just grind it all day. Yeah, you, you can't. Gotta, you can't do that, right? So yeah. I had to start figuring out how to master my grind today, because the Damon John at 48 years old is not the grind that the Damon John at 28 years old had, and and I and I learned all these techniques from the book and um, um, from from asking these people. So what were the big things that people taught you then about this? How how to navigate? Well, so 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 the theory in the book is uh, I, I study these 15 subjects in there and they have uh, success from all various ways of life whether it's uh, Santana or um, 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 uh, Tyler the Creator, the Grammy award-winning kid or mm -hmm. you know our buddy Kyle Maynard who army crawled uh, Mount yeah. Kilimanjaro He's with no arms and no legs right? He's one of the most inspiring guys ever. He is. He, I mean he made me feel like an absolute loser <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, and yep. they all told me the same thing, but they told me in different ways and different formulas. And what I found, what I, what I really, to take away it, the, the takeaway is that everybody is extremely selfish. And all successful people are extremely selfish in a very good way. Like Chris Sacco always says, you know, and, and a lot of these people here will not, they'll not, they will not answer any emails for the first hour of the day because mm -hmm. they believe that you give up all your power if you're answering everybody else's problems when you wake up. They'll send out emails, and like Chris Sacco always says, his, uh, <clears throat> you know, his inbox is his defense, his mm -hmm. outbox is his offense. They won't look at Instagram when they w first wake up or anything else because they don't want to hear about how everybody else on, on the gram is looking beautiful, they're smarter, <laughs> skinnier, whatever. They all got problems, right? right. And before you you know, then they'll then they'll 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 take care of their health in some fashion or form. Eat a great piece of uh, you know nutrition and mm -hmm. put adrenaline in their body. They'll schedule time with their families. You know where most people will say it's so cold. I'm not going to schedule when I'm going to call my mother and tell her I love her or take my daughter out on a little date, daddy and daughter day. Um, but you know what? You'll never get to that if you don't mm -hmm. do it, right? You'll schedule everything else and be on time for everybody else in the world. That you'll be on time for when the train runs. You'll be on time for when the boss wants a meeting. You'll be on time for your friends to go to dinner, but you won't be on time. For your family and before you know right. it they're 20 years old and you don't even know your kids anymore your wife and yourself or your husband you 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 don't have the same interests anymore they'll also schedule time to go in a dark place and meditate and or find find a place that they can be very grateful for what they currently have and they want to know what they currently want other than serving everybody else and in the act of doing all these things 
they become more proficient and also more beneficial for everybody else. They're a better person, they're on time, and they have their faith, and they have everything else. And number one thing they all do is they, they, they value and take care of their health. Yeah. They go out of the way. And, and throughout this process, when I was like talking to Wendy Williams, and, and, and she's a, a vegan now, and so many things, oh, wow. yeah, <clears throat> I learned yeah. to ask to ask more serious questions about my health. You know, if we're in business, we're gonna always ask, you know, how do we increase sales and decrease costs? We're gonna yeah. keep asking why, 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 why? How can we convert more on Facebook, social media, uh, in the store, but we don't ask about our health. And for many years, I've been going to the doctor, I do the normal thing, go get a checkup, you yeah. know, he checks my, my throat and you know, he sees if my uh, glands are swollen here or not. But I started to realize I didn't feel right and some other thing going on. I need to look deeper into these things. And doing that throughout, you know, studying these people here, I ended up finding out that I got a I got an executive physical. I found out I had stage two cancer in my throat. Really? Yeah. I had a nodule in my throat. <clears throat> I had a marble this size what? of stage two cancer in my wow. throat. The doctors felt the doctors touched my throat every year for the last ten years. It probably was in me five years. Uh, didn't wow. know it, but I started asking more questions. And I started to find out all the things that were wrong with me because I just didn't take the, oh, your physical looks okay, right? I started going deeper and deeper and deeper. And, wow. and I ended up finding out I had stage two cancer. I'm, I'm cancer free now. Oh, so, um, so these things wow. all have came out of doing a lot of the practices in the book. People will read the book and find out that either they're doing the right thing or there's five other ways to go about it. Let me try these five. Mm, these four don't work, but bang, that one's the one, you mm -hmm. know? Wow. Yeah. When did the cancer thing happen? When was that? Um, I got the surgery Good Friday on 2017. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's fully gone. Cleared it's fully up. gone. And um, great. thank you. Congrats, thank you. It's got Absolutely. Feel good. And it's important for me to say, wow. you know, I, I, I've been telling people about it because the bottom line is early detection, mm. right? Yeah. The bottom line is going out there and finding out, listen, if you think that there's something that runs in your family, go check it out. Don't don't put your head down and say, I hope this bus doesn't hit me one day. You know, don't put your head in the sand, right? Mm -hmm. Go check it out. Get a mammogram, yeah. pap smear, endoscopy, colonoscopy. You know why? Because um, entrepreneurs don't take care of themselves. Yeah, they take care true. of everybody else. Yeah, you know, for me, the more I understand about my health, I feel like my business continues to grow. When I maximize my health and I have a trainer and I'm mm -hmm. on and I schedule in every single day, I'm not yeah. perfect every day, but when true. I am, I feel like my business is unstoppable. You know, we all talk about business all the time, but the aspect of health is the most important part, and nobody right. talks about it. Yeah, nobody talks about it. And most businessmen and women, you know, go around and you're traveling all the time. And, yeah. You know, it's Eating not whatever. easy to yeah. eat the, the the best things. <laughs> then you're you're at two and three dinners a night. You're drinking because you're bored uh -huh. with a lot of people. You're drinking because you're happy because you're off. You know, you're not sleeping. You're in between climates and things mm -hmm. of that nature. And then all of a sudden, it implodes, and you have nothing left. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Do you have a schedule every day then for your health right now? <clears throat> I try and you know, I'm not perfect. I go back to the yeah, book yeah. often to look at all the things that yeah. um, I want to do. So, you know, I'll give you an example. Sway, you know, loves to say, hey, I, I get up and I bust down, uh, you know, four sets of 25 push-ups a day and gets my adrenaline running. I was doing that until I blew my shoulder out <laughs> yeah. doing something else, right? Yeah, yeah. So now what I do, I, have to do I, uh, I was actually diving in Mexico <laughs> oh, uh, wow. and trying to embarrass my daughters with this this, this dive and I hurt my, my oh, shoulder, man. I embarrassed myself. But, um, um, but, you know, but you know, all right, so now I have to adjust that. So yeah. what do I do now? All right, so, else, so yeah. may, maybe now after I will answer emails after uh, when I do, but I'll be walking on the treadmill for two hours right. answering them. You know, later on, so I get, I get, I put the steps and I'll do leg lifts, I'll do whatever the case mm -hmm. is. But again, it's always adjusting, right? I'm not right. gonna make an excuse. Oh, my arm blown out, so now I can't do anything, right? Because right. Kyle Maynard climbed Mount Kilimanjaro with no arms, no legs. Boom. What the hell's wrong with me? Days. I got one little <laughs> something wrong with my shoulder here, and I can't work out. Yeah, <laughs> <coughs> I had our good buddy uh, Gary Vaynerchuk on recently, and. I always try to get something different out of him. You know, he speaks about this. How can you, you know, get something? I mean, it's get challenging. Something different out of him. He says everything, he's a, right? He's, he's crazy. He says everything. He's in the book. Yeah. By the way, his book is out too, uh, yeah. Crushing It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I asked him what his big insecurity was, and he had an interesting answer. But I was curious if you have any insecurities, because he, the answer he gave, I felt like I didn't hear often. So it was, it was nice to get something I think new my biggest him. insecurity, I don't really have you know, uh, I don't know, what would my insecurity be? Your dad joke is going to land or not? 
<laughs> no, my dad jokes are smoking. <laughs> you know, they are. They are. You know, like, you know why, um, um, you know why seagulls fly over a, a sea, the ocean, instead of over a bay, right? Because they, then they would be called bagels. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> the pirate one. <laughs> anyway, let me. Uh, but insecurities, um, or is it more just after you know thirty fears? Years? Maybe let's say fears. fears. Yeah. Um, uh, not to beat a dead horse, but sure. you know my my health, mm. right? Um, am I going to be around to walk my three little girls down the aisle? Um, mm. th that's a fear that I have. That you know who you know when is my time to go? Because um, if I if I if I didn't have daughters. And you know, beautiful people in my life. If I went today, I'd be happy. I've lived the life of three, three, uh, three people, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, but, but my my time is to serve them. Um, maybe, and you know what? I think maybe a fear or insecurity is: Am I doing enough to save the planet? Mm. You know, if I have a public stage, uh, every time I see something happen out there, whether it's um, whether it's uh, uh, um, uh, something happening to animals or human trafficking or when I every every time I hear something going on out there I want to be the first person on the yeah. line on the front line and I sometimes suffer from analysis analysis paralysis but if I can bring my use my public stage to bring attention to taking illegal guns off the street mm. or, or, or 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 catching predators and things of that nature um, so my fear is that am I doing enough to change the planet how do you decide which cause to support you know there's so yeah. many Every day, there's some exactly. issue. Exactly, so it, needs it's, help. it's very hard. So I, I have to, you know, take inventory of myself and say, where is, where can I add value to these things? And maybe it's the public stage to bring into attention. But, you know, people have this perception that people that are have any level of success walk on water. They have all the money. Like people think I can invest yeah. in every single thing in the world. I'm not the government. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even the government can't do it. Right, you know what right. I mean? So. They, they think that I can just make, wave a magic wand and change the entire world. And sometimes you get caught up in going, well, if I see people that go out in the world and build, help build mm -hmm. schools and, 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 and go to the Peace Corps <clears throat> and go and build dams in other yeah. countries, they're making me feel like a loser. I can do more. Yeah. You know, but I can't do everything. Of course. And how do you choose... You know, how many companies have you invested in now in total? It Hundreds? could be 60 or 80 oh, or something like that. You. Yeah, yeah. Got you. How do you choose which opportunities to take on when you have so much thrown at you on Shark Tank, but also just email and Twitter and people just say, hey, here's my idea, can you invest? Very, very hard. How, uh, do you, well, how do you make money when you have so many things you're working on? Yeah, yeah well, like, first of all, I don't really invest in other companies outside of uh, Shark Tank, Shark Tank yeah, yeah. because uh, that takes up a lot of, it's, it's my money and it's, a, it's time. Uh -huh. um, and if I would follow my own rules, then if I were to invest in other companies, then I should go invest in myself even further. Whether whether help bring Fubu back or mm -hmm. or uh, my other companies that I own. Why you know the grass is not greener on the other side. You know, kind yeah. of work on myself. Work on myself. How to how to maximize social media and empowering people and things of that nature. So I really don't invest outside of Shark Tank. Got it. Uh, um, but no, it it, it is a. It is a massive, massive uh, 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 job to decide on where to where to focus your energy and your yeah. staff. Because it's really easy for me to say to my staff, "Hey, why don't we go do this?" Well, now you put five, ten, twenty, thirty people in, and you gave them all four, uh, ten hours of work a week. It's not you, and then all of a sudden you're going to ask, "Well, why is this crumbling?" Well, boss, you yeah. told me to do this. Yeah. Right. So it's a it's a lot of responsibility, and it. It's 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 rise and grind. It's writing yeah. down goals, A's and B's on your goals, mm -hmm. and finding out what you want to do the best. Yeah. What do you think is the one thing you could do this year to help you drastically increase your revenue or income with everything that you're doing? Is it you know the food booth thing or reinvesting back in yourself? Is it taking a couple things and going all in with a few things or? Um, I think today, you know, if I was going to maximize, then it would have to be, you know, really looking at the 80-20 at the company and, and personally, mm -hmm. meaning what is the 20% of stuff that is creating 80% of the revenue and or joy or time in my life, whether it's personally or whatever the case yeah. is, and really digging deep into that thing. And a lot of times people don't want to look at the 80-20. Right. I do look at it as often as I can, but I'm human as well. Mm -hmm. I get caught up in some things that may be from a, a, a reason I think needs to be done, uh, and, I, and I get off track, but I have to go back to my goals and look at them. But yeah, it would be the eighty twenty. Like, what are what are what are providing the 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 eighty percent of revenue and or joy for mm -hmm. my staff and myself and keeping people there? 
Um, what do you think that is right now? Um, I would say that Fubu right now is doing really well. We have a collaboration out with Puma. Nice. Um, and that's that's having a resurgence. Uh, of course, um, whether it's 80-20 or not, the, the new people that come on the Shark Tank I need to invest in because they gave me the opportunity to invest in their dreams. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's their time right now. And, I, and I, I, I took on that job of making sure that I do the best for them. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's what... And then my personal brand as I get out there and I start to educate people because, you know, for a long period of time, I didn't want to necessarily... Um, I didn't feel like, uh, you know, I wanted to go out and educate because I didn't want people thinking, oh, my God, he's trying to make money selling us books and curriculum. But you right. know better than anybody else, you don't make money off of books, right? right? Yeah. Uh, you do it because you want to change people's lives. And right. now I realize that, unfortunately, there's too many people out there selling people insecurities in this world. And that I do need to come out with more products mm -hmm. and ideas because I was put on this public stage to show people that if my dumb ass can make it, everybody else can. Yeah. And that I need to create more curriculums like Damon On Demand or like Rise and Grind or The Power of Broke or my DJ mm -hmm. Success Formula or Speaking Engagements or whatever to empower people and not feel guilty that Hey, you know what? I gotta charge you because I gotta, I gotta keep the lights on. I gotta right. pay this staff that's traveling around, or the writers and everything else. So, I, I think to improve more of what I'm giving to people, to show people that you can make it. And you don't have to have a lot of money. You gotta just be able to ready to bust your butt and get out there and do it. So again, investing in myself to get this information out to the world on my mm. podcast and things of that nature. Yeah, yeah. Because you did the you did the new podcast around the book, right? Yeah, I did the new podcast around the book. It was me kind of like you know giving people an insight on how I'm uh, you know the questions I'm asking individuals and um, really fascinating stuff. My rising grind podcast has been doing really amazing, and I put people on there that weren't even in the book. People like Barbara, you know, yeah. I, man, you know, of course, I had a really great conversation. She's great, with Barbara. yeah. I've learned so much from Barbara. She's 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 really a brilliant person. The reason I like that is she comes at things with a very average every day the people shark type of approach very mm -hmm. simplistic yeah you know i learned like even you know she said stuff that's really amazing like listen i put down i i, I used to write down what i love and what i hate and i made sure the things that i hate i outsource it or got yeah. people away from me that created this hate for whatever this is and i focused on what i love and as i did this everything else mentally started to shift here and i got rid of these things right, right, and, right. and so she has such a simplistic approach to things but she's a brilliant brilliant woman yeah what would you say is the thing that you're excited about the most right now you got so much going on um you know i you know i'm excited I'm excited about everything I do, to be very honest, but I'm going on 10 years on Shark Tank. Um, the next Oprah Winfrey or Steve Jobs or Bill Gates is in their pajamas eating cereal watching Shark Tank. Mm. And they're gonna get up here and the film nights of the world, they're gonna go and they're gonna change the entire world. And they're 12 years old right now, eating cereal in their pajamas saying, I'm gonna be that next person. So Shark Tank is absolutely amazing. Having books when you when you know you're so close to it a lot of times that when you finally put it out and you see that it's changing people's lives, um, I'm really really excited about that. Of yeah. course, like like I said, I'm I'm so I'm so I'm so on this health thing that I'm realizing how screwed up I was prior, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that I'm gonna figure this thing out. Uh, I have my 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 little girl, of course, and my two older girls, and my two older girls as most people watching or listening to this would. Uh, most parents would say to themselves, you know, was I a good parent and did my did my child grow up to change the world? And I'm seeing my two older girls mm. are being the, the, the grown up to be the women that I wanted them That's to be cool. and that, that they're, they're adding a positive impact to this planet. Um, um, I'm really looking forward. I'm this year. I'm looking forward to to acquiring a lot more dad jokes to just make me that guy. <laughs> I gotta I gotta send you some. I'm you gonna find some. I'm gonna text you. You gotta send some. me some dad. Yeah, I mean, yeah. dad jokes are really really important. They're high on my list. What's your favorite one of all time? The pirate one was pretty good. No, I have a lot of them. Uh, there's no one favorite dad joke. They, 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 and they come any time, right? So they can come at any time. And then you won't even laugh at them right then. You may laugh at them later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot later. <clears throat> like, you know, like what does a pirate say when they, they turn 80 years old? Uh, uh, I matey. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> That's gonna hit you about two in the morning. Yeah, you know, I got you get it. Up to go to the bathroom. That was good. Uh, that was good. Yeah. Oh man, what about? <laughs> 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 right. 
what's the thing you're most proud of? Um, I'm most proud of being able to escape the clutches of everybody else's goals that they set for me when I was 16 and 20 years old, like most of the people that grew up in neighborhoods that, uh, that people told them they were going to be dead or in jail or that mm. they weren't good because of their color or their skin or education or because they didn't have any money. And I escaped, those, I escaped those goals that were set for me by society, by people in the neighborhood who may not have had the right support system around them. And I defied those, 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 those odds and I became a person that I'm very proud of uh, who I am today. Um, and uh, people could look at me and say, if he can make it, I can make yeah. it, um, and that's that's the thing I'm most proud of. If I die today, or tomorrow, yeah. or 50 years from now, I don't. There's nothing in my closet that I need to hide. Yeah. There, there, there's nothing that I, I need to second guess. And it was it was okay. It was okay doing the right thing when I when I had like everybody else listening to us had the option to do the wrong thing. It was yeah. okay to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. If dad jokes bring you the most joy and laughter. What's the thing that uh, pulls at your heart the most? Is there things that happen in your it's day to day? It's just those causes. It's those causes yeah. to. Uh, it's those causes to find out yeah. that um, you know there's a meat market for dogs. It's crazy, right? You know, to find out that that there are people who 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 can. You know, you can put your trust in them to have your kids go and be gymnasts, and then all of a sudden yeah. they abuse your trust and they they violate your your children and, and things like that. You know, those things, those things cause me pain. Yeah. 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 What's been the most painful thing in your life? Um, getting divorced when I was, uh, my first marriage because, you know, um, my ex-wife is a, is a, is a, is a driven, brilliant person. And, um, um, you know, my, 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 my marriage was sacrificed due to me working hard, me being young and dumb and, you know, you don't give a 30 year old, you know, a couple of million dollars and, uh, fame at the same time. And, right. and, and that doesn't have an adverse effect. You know right, what I mean? Right. Um, um, so, you know, you know, How you, long were you together for or married for? <clears throat> Um, uh, we probably married for about four years, I forgot yeah. what it was, but we were together, she was with me before the food was success, yeah. you know, and still, she's still, she's still one of my closest friends and, um, and biggest inspirations. She's, she's the best partner I can ever have, so we're mm. just not married any longer, but right. very supportive. Yeah. Right. That was a challenging transition for you? Well, of course it was a challenging transition, but as you look back, I mean, you know, when would you ever, you know, not want to be in your family's lives and stuff like that, knowing that you could have controlled or you could have made a better effort to be a better person, right? Mm -hmm. But being human is human, you know, there's so many yeah. different aspects and things that come in your life. And many people who are business people, you know, they're on their second and third marriages, you know? Um, yeah. But on the flip side, listen. You know, my, my, my wife now and my baby now wouldn't be here if, if that didn't happen. So everything happens for a reason. I don't ever regret anything that happened. It just becomes a, a, a pain, you know, that you yeah. think about. Do you ever think about <clears throat> your family as a business in terms of, like, running it like a like an entrepreneur? Would? Um, I didn't in the past, but I do now almost. Really? Um, again, because of, of some of these studies I've had in here, I realized that making the family a priority and running it like a business is, is great. It may seem cold, but it is very proficient if you do. It's effective, right? It, yeah. It's effective, yeah. How do you run your family like a business now then? And well, you, ske you, you schedule time, first of all. You look at the investment that you're doing into future education mm. and or, you know, it all is going to be time, generally. It's going to be <clears throat> personal time, educational time, relaxation time, you know, and, 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 and solving problems. You know, I think one of my friends said to me, you know, when he had a problem with his wife, he said, um, you know, the wife said, well, why aren't you trying to work this out? He's like, I don't have time. She said, but if I was a client, you'd make time, you'd yeah. make time, right? To work you, this out, right? right? If I was paying you, you, you wouldn't want to lose that deal. Right. Why do you want to lose mm. this relationship or this discussion we need to have? And um, I realized that, and that you know, and that was that was that was something somebody said in the book, and I started to put in more time, 
And if you look at this, you know, a book like uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, um, as you talked about, I realized throughout that time, you know, um, you, you start to find out more about yourself as you start to look at your, <clears throat> your family. You see what you're doing, good, bad, or indifferent, yeah. and you start to understand yourself, and you become more proficient in other aspects of life. You know, when FUBU really went down, it was right around when I had my divorce. Really? I don't think it was a uh, coincidence. Yeah, coincidence. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Hmm. It, it was the real. It was reality. You know, I was miserable at home. Um, I was taking yeah. it out on my work. I was making bad decisions, and I think that we just don't talk about family and health and all that stuff in in regards to how important it is for success in business. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Why is it? Do you think that's in some entrepreneurs will. How, not have those conversations with their partner or their wife or fiance, but they're willing to have those negotiations with their business I, deals. I think because it's more fun on the other on the business stuff, or if it's. Well, too I, I think that I think the I think that the business is a very very clear thing. It it it's a number, right? Tomorrow you have money for payroll or not, right? Right, and you have to address it. You can try to hide it if you want and not talk about it, but the rent needs to be paid right. on the 1st or the 30th, right? And or the inventory is sitting there. So it's something you have to address. Mm -hmm. And all these other personal things, they're personal, right? <clears throat> I, I've seen the biggest titans of industry uh, be someone who will do billion dollar deals, but yet they're afraid to have a conversation with a woman at, at, at a bar because they mm -hmm. feel... Uh, they feel too open and vulnerable, right? Yeah. When they can hide behind a pen, a checkbook, a desk, or a wall, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I think that the personal aspect of life uh, is something that people don't want to address because it's so fluid. And it's scary. It's scarier, right? Yeah. The heart, like this. the heart. Yeah. You, you know, you you want to. You know, listen, I can sit across the table from you and I can say, I'm going to give you, you know, this $50 for this. And you say, give me 70 and I say, screw you, yeah. right? Because, you know, you're just negotiating with me. But if in, if you're personally sitting across from the table and you go like, you know, can I hold your hand? And a, a woman or a man goes, get the hell out of here. Hurts. You'll remember that for the rest of your life. <laughs> it hurts, oh, yeah. Because, I, I, you listen, yeah, I remember when this girl didn't want to kiss me when I was 16 years old. That damn Lisa. That's why you went and built up FUBU. That's says, right. Show you. Show Lisa. <laughs> she was crazy. as hell, though. Ah, who cares? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Mm. <laughs> I'm still thinking about the beginning, the the pirate beginner. Yeah. Um, I had a question I want to ask you, but it's escaping me now. Do you let that roll through the podcast like you thinking now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's <clears throat> good because I like that because yeah, I, I want more, people to, to know natural. that you're you're processing the information. Yeah. God, I had a really good thought. Sometimes when I'm interviewing, I have really good thoughts, but I have my goal is to be so present, yeah. but then the thought escapes me. Um, gosh, what was that? It'll come to me. I'm curious, this is what it was, got it. Um, you've seen so many deals yeah. over the last 10 years. You've been in business for a long time yourself, yeah. pre-Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. Now with cryptocurrency and just everything online and what, what companies like Airbnb and Uber and these other companies have been able to do to scale so quickly, uh, Dropbox, things like that, they've just built massive businesses very quickly. Over the next 10 years, what do you see as a great opportunity to get into in business? Is it more physical goods and clothing? Is it more food products? Is it more online digital software products if you were to recommend for an entrepreneur starting the day knowing that so much has been changing and so much is going to continue to change what would you put what would be like the best industry business <clears throat> idea to get into <clears throat> well it would be hard to tell me to tell somebody what the best industry is unless if they're just a passive investor and you can look at industries like I play the market, I'll play infrastructure and I'll play, you know, technology and various things, right? Because I don't need to operate the business. Yeah. But if you're really going to operate the business, it has to be something that you're fascinated in, right? Or you, yeah. it's something that, again, is Christmas every single day. Say I mean, it's Christmas every day for someone, yeah. for whatever that is. 
I think that no matter what it is, it doesn't have to be anything specific. It has to be something, though, that is converting direct to the customer. And you're cutting out all the middlemen because mm -hmm. right now with all the noise, it's very hard. So I like companies, whether you're selling socks or you're selling food or you're selling fitness products or curriculums, you're talking directly to the customer and you have various different platforms. You're talking to them because, you know, I'm finding out like, you know, I was talking to one of my guys and he was like, well, Vine is gone right now. So what happened with those people who have five million? million people on mine but they don't have any emails right. where they were they're they're gone now they have five million people they worked so hard for that so whether it's um right whether it's a membership and you're selling somebody a subscription model or whatever the case is you or your amazon you got that button on your uh you know on your on your washing machine that boom you hit that tide is coming right to you you just eliminate everybody advertising all right. kind of other uh things because you're a creature of habit, you're going to hit it. Or if your credit card is billed $5 a month, you're not going to take that damn $5 off. By the time you call those people, they're going to give you such a heartache on taking the $5 off, right. you're going to give them another 50 right? right? So I think it's anybody that is delivering something straight to the customer and they have full margin, they know their analytics, they know who their customer is so they can upsell their customer and or provide better value and get also real-time information on mm -hmm. what is working or not working yeah. from the customer so no matter what it is that's what that's yeah. that's the business you know that's why I love the online world right now just there's so many opportunities I feel like I got it in at the right time I knew nothing about business 10 years yeah. ago right and I got kind of lucky of timing and just like curiosity and working really hard to be able to understand this now it's online the, this is this is where it's at there's no inventory no inventory. You know. that, that's it. I mean, and even if it is inventory, you can probably turn your inventory fairly quickly yes. and not have to worry, like I said, yeah. the 60, 90 days turn and things of that nature. So exactly. fascinating, fascinating time. But the only thing that people have to understand about this is that now everybody could do it as well. Everyone. So you better get up and bust your ass. You yeah. better rise and grind because everybody can do it. So mm. how do you separate yourself from the noise? It goes back to the fundamentals of being able yeah. to get up before everybody else and go to bed after everybody else, you know? Yeah. What would you say is your unique superpower? Picking good people. Yeah. I am I am I am not um, the smartest person in the world, but I have a uh, you know, I have this knack for picking good people. I have this knack also for allowing people to fail and seeing the good within them. And when everybody else goes, uh, you know, they are short-tempered with the people or whatever the case is, I figure, I figure that just like an entrepreneurship, if this stuff has failed between you and I and you didn't do a good job, I know one less thing I can give you, but now where can I give you stuff that, is, that makes you uh, who you are? And I think that um, that that's my knack. I give a lot of people a lot of chances, but mm. they it, it ends up coming back to me double and triple right. in value because they are amazing people. Yeah. yeah. What's the thing you see that you look for when you can pick them? Is it like a, a feeling right away? Is it no, more it's like never feel right away. Themselves? It's never it? feel right away because they have to unfold the the you know their their you know everybody's on their best behavior when you first meet them. You know, take the onion off. And yeah. yeah. Exactly. So it's drive right it's that they think mm -hmm. outside the box they're problem solvers they're also able to communicate throughout a team and a system and they have a very clear vision on the things that they like and they know how to communicate that to everybody else mm -hmm. so everybody else can kind of see their way they may not be good in one area but it doesn't matter if <clears throat> I, I you know i you know I'll, I'll, if i pick a person i'll put them in any area you know what i mean and they'll figure it out those type of common sense those type of, would drive mm -hmm. And some level of respect, honesty, and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, you you just can't you can't lose when you have somebody like that. You right. have somebody ready to bust their ass, and you can't if they're if they're never gonna stop. They're gonna figure it out one day. Yeah, you can't beat those people. <laughs> yeah, and they're gonna if you don't work with them, they're gonna go off and be your competitor. Exactly, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I got a few questions left for you, uh, but I want to make sure you guys get the book. Go check it out. Rise and Grind, powerful book. A lot of great case studies. Uh, you got Gary V in here, Kyle Maynard, Grant Cardone. I saw is in here as well. Grant Cardone, Mr. Ten X. You got Gary. We're speaking, v. we're speaking at the event together. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We, we were there last year. <clears throat> Grant, you He's know what I love like about him in this book? He says time is so valuable that he'll set a meeting at nine oh six. <laughs> Um, and be there at 9.06 and be over at 9.15. And so what does that do? That puts everybody else on their best behavior in regards to time. They'll know, I ain't going to come in at 9 and float around. 9.06, we're on. Yeah. And when you start valuing those, uh, you know, 1,440 minutes you have of the day or 86,660 seconds you have of the day, when you start scheduling and understanding the value of that, you get the most out of your day. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. Do you schedule everything every day for you, pretty much? I, I do schedule most of the stuff, but I also leave that gap for, uh, you know, shit happens, yeah. right? You know, yeah, Minka, yeah. you know, you know, Peppa Pig is not on at the right time, you know, Minka's not, you know, she's going to set it off in the house, right? So right. I'm going to have to, you know, I need that half an hour to calm her down, you know what I mean? Sure, sure. Um, uh, you know, problem's going to come up, you know? But, you know, a lot of people like, let's talk about emails, you know? 20 years ago, did you walk around just opening your mail all times of the day? No. no. So, got so it at 9 a.m. or whatever. Or right. Some people, some people here will say, "No, I'm opening emails from 4:30 to 5:30. I'm done." Yeah. Right. I'm not letting sure. that consume me. Sure. Right. And then move on to other things. Yeah. Right. Or you know, so there's a lot of different ways to maximize time. But again, we all know that's the only thing we're never going to get back. That's true. That's true. Um, this is called the three truths. I can't remember if I asked you last time. I think you did I not. did. Okay. This is called the three truths. Maybe you did. Maybe I did, but maybe like, I want to see this change. Maybe I saw, saw you in a different like Yeah. Um, so it's the last day for you many years from now. You've achieved everything you've ever wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. Written all the books, businesses, you've made all the money. Yeah. Your daughters, you've walked them all down the aisle. Everything you've ever wanted to do. Yeah. You've caught the biggest bass, bass in the world. you got the world record, oh right? Oh, my God. Are you a bass guy? Or are you I like am. A, I am. Yeah. I'm a bass guy. You get the world record for the biggest catch. Damn. Right? Yeah. Everything you want. It's happened. Uh -huh. You just lit up there. <laughs> yeah, I would kill myself right there if I caught the bass. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for, but for whatever reason, all the stuff you've ever created has been erased. The books are gone. People don't have access to your information anymore. Sure. Your lessons, your wisdom is gone for whatever reason. Mm. Now, hypothetically, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you've got a piece of paper and a pen. And you get to write down three things you know to be true about all the lessons you've learned from mm -hmm. your life whether it be personal, family, business, mm -hmm. health, anything. But you only get three things to share. And this is all the world has to remember you by. Mm -hmm. What would you say are your three truths? Um, be in the moment. Live in the moment. Love as much as you can. Your family and mm -hmm. whatever else it is. And, um, um, uh, you know, have faith in God. I was like, solid. I like him. Yeah. That's it. And go for the bass, the world record. Well, if you have faith in God, <laughs> then you're going to catch that bass. There you go. Right? And like if you it. love your family, they love you yeah. too, they're going to allow you to go fishing as much as you can. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And like if you're in the moment, you're going to you're gonna take a rod and go right down to the lake every moment you can. I like that. Yeah. So yeah. it goes back to that bass, man. That's good. Yeah. I like that. Um, I want to acknowledge you, Damon, because every time I'm around you, you're always very generous and kind and giving and and supportive. Well, thank and you, I man. think people sometimes people who uh, have a lot of success and a lot of uh, you know recognition and opportunities aren't always so nice, but you always show up with a very caring, giving heart. Every time I'm around you with your friends or people that uh, maybe aren't close to you, you're always yeah. very kind. And Thank you, giving of your time and wanting to always support and lift others up. So I acknowledge you for uh, our friendship and always. Well, I think I think I think the up. same with you, man. And I think that a lot of people can learn from this in in some form because, you know, a lot of us are raised with the theory that business has to be hard and cutthroat, and mm -hmm. you got to be like you know J.R. Ewing in Dallas or Michael Douglas on Wall Street, and that's the only way to go. It's you know it's wreckable, and. Um, my life, I'm here because of a lot of giving people. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm here because of those teachers that believed in a little dyslexic boy or uh, my stepfather who came in my life uh, at the age of 15 who, um, who is of the Jewish faith. And uh, it gave me a worldview to understand that um, love doesn't come in a color or a gender and the people are amazing. And, and I got to understand something about white people that, first yeah. of all, they're, you know, white, black, yellow, love doesn't come in gender, and white people are just as screwed up as black people too, yeah. right? And yeah. he, he made it very human. But uh, I remember his brother, his brother was the lead attorney uh, to uh, in, a, in America to uh, fight for the abolishment of apartheid and, and the freeing of Mandela. And when I see that, that people of all color and people like that are, are giving. And, you know, we, we don't get to see the human aspect of society and the beautiful part of it. And then when I was growing up, you know, in business, you would think you would be my competition. Carl Kanai, who created, uh, mm -hmm. you know, who's really a, a, a prominent figure in urban apparel, he was one of the first people to, to, to introduce me to stores and help me, wow. right? So I, I, I came up seeing people who were giving. I didn't come up seeing cutthroat people, or maybe 
I have blinders on and right. I wouldn't deal with them. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that that's a lesson that people need to yeah. know outside because everybody's trying to put on this facade like you got to be so tough you can't you can't be tough to be on the team right so I, I appreciate the the yeah. acknowledgement but you know um, I just think that's the way it should be yeah of course you know? well keep it up you're doing an amazing job well, thank you brother I appreciate um, it yeah make sure you guys get the book uh, follow you on Instagram. Where do you hang out the most right now on social media? I'm I'm on Insta. Well, I'm on I'm on I'm on all I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, uh, my Insta stories. Uh, you know, I'm I'm doing that. You're getting and, hard on there. I like it. I'm yeah. You know, I'm trying, man. I'm trying to you know, I'm trying to be like you guys. You guys are right. I got to get that mentality. Just flip on the camera. Don't yeah. don't overthink it. Don't produce it too much. Yeah, yeah, you know it. what I mean? Um, yeah, but that's where I am, uh, and, and hopefully I'm out there giving the good information, and then you yeah. obviously catch the podcast. Yeah. And, um, it's called Rise and Grind Podcast? Or is Rise and Grind it? Podcast. Yeah, check it out. It's, uh, it's up there now. And, and it's um, a lot of the interviews you did with the story. The, a lot of these interviews as well as uh, other interviews that are not in the book. Oh, sweet. Awesome. Yeah, so, yeah, so go have subscribe a good time. to that. Um, final question, what's your definition of greatness? You know... Um, well, the, the quick answer is the one that everybody knows, uh, which is uh, uh, what success is, you know, doing something you love every day. But my, I think my uh, greatness, um, you know, being satisfied with yourself and being able to sleep at night uh, because of the journey that you've taken and um, mm. just really being able to sleep at night and not having to, not having to say, man, I shouldn't have done that. And now I got to correct myself. Like, you know, like just being able to, I can, I sleep really, really good at night. Yeah. I do, That's great. Uh, and I'm and I'm glad that I do because my life, uh, you know, growing up in a, in a tough neighborhood, I I could have made other turns, mm -hmm. and I and I you know and I was very tempted as a kid. But just being able to, that that that's what it is because so many people think that money is success and it's not. It really isn't. And I'm not saying that because I got a couple of dollars. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, it's it really isn't. I I know people that are that don't have a pot to piss and they're the happiest you can ever imagine. All right, All right, Damon. Thanks, bro. Thank Appreciate you, brother. It. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thanks, man.